there we go. Hey, now we're there. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Hope Fellowship. First Sunday in July, Canada Day weekend. And uh, I'm thrilled that all of you are here in person. Um, and thank you for those that are watching online and you've already begun commenting. So if you're watching online, please make a comment and let us know where you're watching from. Uh, and then we'll interact with you in a little bit. Um, and that's good. Anybody sending me messages, I can't read them. So stop it, Rod. Anyway, <laughs> it's the way it is. It's awesome. Um, what else? Okay, let's get into this. Oh, before we do, um, I want to welcome St. James Lutheran Church. Uh, throughout the summer, the, uh, some of the folks may be coming and joining us here because they're not having their services in the sanctuary because it's really hot and there's no air conditioning. So uh, we may be doing some uh, co-fellowshipping, which would be a lot of fun. So if you see people you don't know, Ask away, and uh, I think it's great. So thank you, thank you. Let's get into this. Uh, you are live. Got that already. A um, couple quotes I found. I want to just start off before I get into my announcement that I kind of triggered some um, contemplation for me this week. Religion is a belief someone else, uh, in someone else's experience. Spirituality is having your own experience. Now, it's a nice generic statement, but... There's some truth to this in that the system of religion, the, the rules you must do in order to be liked by God, that is a system of control where when we experience our relationship with Jesus, some people call it spirituality, that's when real relationship happens. And I thought that was really cool. This next one, we have, sorry, we have to leave the house of God in order to encounter God in the wild and to truly know there's nowhere God is not. The path is not steady. It's not a steady time. But your heart can be and your hands can be. There are many people who have discovered that the building is not the church. Jesus kind of pointed that out and says, you go to the temple. But uh, he really was pointing to himself being uh, the one who's the one that's going to be indwelling us. And uh, sometimes people think they walk away from God. And people in church say, oh, they've walked away from God. Are you kidding? God never leaves them. There's no walking away. Away is impossible. <laughs> it's just impossible. Uh, there's nowhere you can go where God isn't. So nice try. So instead, it's about the awareness of the presence of God in and around you. I thought that was pretty cool. Let's get into this. Huh? Oh. Oh, shoot. I made it. Anyway, forget that boo-boo. Um, that's from last time. Um, birthdays. Elizabeth. So I know it's, it was last week. Yesterday, in fact. And so I want to give her an extra shout-out, because there are a few people who deserve a shout-out. And then she posted a picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Elizabeth, yesterday. She's uh, 86 years old uh, as of yesterday, and a dear saint. Her husband passed away a year ago, and uh, I'm going to give his date in a moment, so... Uh, we just love you, Elizabeth. So happy birthday yesterday. You get a double shout out. I don't do it for hardly anybody. So, you know, there you go. All right. Next, Mike. Uh, good morning and happy birthday to you today. And Scarlett's birthday is today. Uh, anniversaries, Gordon, Janessa, and Tara and Laura. Happy uh, anniversary to you guys. Then we have a list of people to pray for. So this is kind of a big deal. Like this list has suddenly grown and I'm inviting you to keep contributing. And when you get those, the weekly email, if you want to be on the weekly email list, send me an email. We'll add you to the list. You can be removed anytime. Um, but you can begin to contemplate and pray for these folks. We got Jen Shaw's mom who's in hospital and having a rough time. Elizabeth had a, ended up in the hospital this week and is fine and recovering, but just keep praying for her. Robinson. Uh, Sadiq, remember, if you did not watch last week's video, I'll get to it in a minute, uh, but pray for his government paperwork. He's been in the States for 10 months, and it, it's a nightmare trying to get those, those legal papers figured out, and I'll talk about that again in a few moments for those who don't know who he is. Paula, one of our online uh, listeners, uh, last time um, uh, made a comment, a uh, prayer for her mother-in-law who believe in mother-in-law, yeah, who is uh, in hospice, and so just praying for her family. I was not live live last week, so I couldn't comment on that. Um, so I saw it, but I couldn't say anything, so I'm giving a shout out now. Uh, and Becky, oh, poor Becky, had a fall, and she's okay, nothing broken, but I uh, pray for her. But now her husband's doing the dishes, is cooking and cleaning. Stay sick for a few more days. Anyway, <laughs> 
And then a woman named Jane, please pray for Jane, that is her name, um, for cancer. That's really, this, the journey she's in is brutal. And so there's a great chance of recovery, but uh, excruciating pain. So just, just pray for her, please. And then today we remember Elwin, who passed away on the 9th, which is next Saturday, um, Elizabeth's husband. So that's, that's not that long ago. It seems like not too long ago, but that's already... Like 2019, like it's crazy how time flies. So anyway, just a lot of things to keep in mind for. So just kind of highlight that slide, um, or check your weekly email this week and pray for them. After church next Sunday, we're going to do a barbecue, and I called it a light barbecue because it's not a church dinner. So if you're coming expecting a full course, di- no, this is just a burger and jumbo dog and whatever, and I think there's some vegan stuff coming. But anyway, I'm not in charge of that. Um, But either way, it's just for us to connect. So if you haven't been here for a while, those watching online that haven't been back for a while, come on out. But I'm begging you, please reply to the email um, that you are coming. We'll have extras, but it's nicer to know a rougher idea of how many are coming. Um, Because then we can just have a fun. We're just going to open those doors, provided the weather's good. If it's raining, pouring, we're not doing it. But or we'll do it in here, we'll find another way to cook them. But uh, that'll be out that door right after church, and it's just kind of a fresh gathering of fun, say hello, all chill. Is that good? All right. Um, yeah, see, not a dinner. This is, hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Just in case expectations go too high. <laughs> um, support. Thank you for those that are supporting um, week to week or month to month, however you do it. Uh, if you believe in what we're doing, financial support, we need it. Uh, can't club anybody over the head because it's not biblical at all. <laughs> so this is more of an invite to support. And uh, uh, thank you for that so far. Check your email this week. Uh, there's a pleasant change in our financial update that uh, some of you who have been looking at, you'll be surprised. Those who haven't, you won't have a clue. But anyway, uh, next, Music. Uh, today we do not have live music, um, but I think next week we do, I th- or I think. I love it when we, yes, Jesse's on, yay! Okay, so Jesse's on next week. Phew. Um, but these two songs, I, I think we've done them not too, too long ago, but the reason I chose them is they dovetail with today's message. So listen to the words Carefully. So we're only doing two songs this morning. Sit and enjoy, sing along, hum along, or just let the music speak to your soul. Um, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll get going with stuff in just a moment. So here we go. You are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper Underneath your Darkest night is true. Oh, I will rest. 
I will sing for you alone. I will rescue this life. Jesus, you have set me free. You alone took away all sin and disgrace. When you gave your life to ransom me, I am forgiven. At the foot of the cross, I am accepted. By the power of your love, my every stain is washed away. I stand in the light of your glory and grace where heaven's love and justice meet now I live for the one who has called me by name who is risen and alive in me I am forgiven the foot of the cross I am accepted by the power of your love my every stain is washed away I am forgiven How'd you like that? Those were beautiful words. And uh, St. James was kind of a location. Did you catch your background there? <laughs> wow. Love that. And thank you to our musicians who do this. Um, I think there's a couple more recordings coming because we're not out of this yet. We don't have a full uh, schedule of musicians and leaders. It, it, my hope is that this September will be kind of the, our restart and where we can begin again and kind of reset and know what we're working with. So that's my hope. All right, can I have the power for the clicker? All right. All right, here we go. There we go. Kids time. Anybody that's going to go down to hang out with Megan, careful. She can be really mean. <laughs> I don't think so. Sassy, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. All right, let's say hello to those who are watching online and from where they're watching. Those that are sitting here, um, I'm really glad that you are here. Now, I, I made a mistake a long time ago, and Lori was sitting there, and I wanted the online people to know who's sitting here. So I thought I'd call out names. But I have this really bad problem. I freeze. 
And I forget people's names, people I've known like a long time. And sure enough, I'm Lori just going, she's trying to go like this, don't. And then, because <laughs> I messed up. And I bumped into somebody yesterday at a funeral, and she looked at me, and I went, yeah, I remember the face. Don't make me. And it was Chelsea. Uh, Jackson, so that's pretty cool. I bumped into her, and uh, um, but I had to apologize for not remembering her name. It's like, oh, anyway, that's one of my weaknesses. So there we go. Deal with it. All right, Karen. Good morning, in, in uh, um, see Wellesley, Howard in Sorrento, British Columbia. Um, hopefully the weather's good there for you. Thank you for chiming in. It's bright and early for you. Uh, Elizabeth and Norma are watching from St. Jacob's. Brenda and John from Kitchener. Jim down in Windsor. Good morning. You have a wonderful day too. Alex and Karen in Ottawa. Good morning to you guys. And Debbie and Jerry in New Hamburg. Paul and Debbie down in Chatham. R- um, Rod's watching on Twitch, which really is in Kitchener, but watching from the website. Just make sure you don't itch. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Becky, good morning from uh, Waterloo and Becky and Wayne. Hope you're doing okay, Beck. I really, really do hope. Drew from the fifth row, and uh, all right, Nancy from Waterloo, good morning, and Bev down in Chatham, hey, good morning, that's great, you got two Chatham families watching, Ron Sharon, good morning to you guys, um, and then Elizabeth uh, said, I knew I'd seen you in, an, uh, Rod, Rod Sider writes this, Elizabeth, I knew I'd seen you in an earlier life on Star Trek. <laughs> he was commenting on the picture. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Norma writes, Elizabeth got a huge laugh out of her birthday acknowledgement. Ha ha. Yes, it was funny. And then Brian from uh, one, two, third row. Um, and uh, Rainy down in Alabama. Yay. Bob Engel. I forget where you live, Bob. Um, but uh, somewhere in the States, obviously. But, and then Rainy. Uh, he says he has to take off in a moment to join their worship service. And he's conducting 17 baptisms this morning. Nine men from two drug rehabs. He's a chaplain at a drug rehab place. Like, this, this is Saint Rainey. I love this guy. He was actually in the forgiveness conference and shared a lot of his heart in that. It was phenomenal. If you don't know Rainey, friend him. He's, he's just an awesome, awesome person. And he says beautiful music. Wayne and Jackie, good morning from Kitchener. Um, Paul, uh, Bethany from Durango, Colorado. And uh, congratulations on your Stanley Cup. <sighs> anyway, Susan from Stony Creek. Yay. Thank you, everyone. So there's quite a few watching from different places. It's a lot of fun. I'm not going to name everybody who's here. <clears throat> I'm not going to fall into that trap. All right. <laughs> let's, let's begin. Heavenly Father, this morning, will you soften our hearts to hear what it is we need to hear this morning. If we've already heard it, great. But if there's more you want to encourage us with, I pray you put our antennas up so that when you do try to get our attention, we're ready to hear what it is you want to encourage us with. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Intentional thankfulness. I thought I was done. I did two parts, and then as I got thinking through uh, the message, and even changed this morning, said, oh, don't do this. (laughs) Yeah, I was scrambling. It was a lot of fun. Uh, So part three, we're putting a third one into this. Um, uh, I want to begin with a devotional from Henry Nouwen. Uh, Henry's got a lot of great stuff. And this was on gr- the choice of gratitude. And I think sometimes when things aren't going well, when we become bummed out, anxious, whatever you want to call it, um, it's then we need to intentionally be thankful to help direct our attention. Because when we're anxious, our attention is on anxious things. Let's read. Gratitude goes beyond the mine and thine and claims the truth that all of life is a pure gift. In the past, I always thought of gratitude as a spontaneous response to the awareness of gifts received. But now I realize that gratitude can also be lived as a discipline. Now, this is, this is an important point. The idea of being thankful for what you have, that's kind of what's been taught. That's kind of how we've talked about it. Just, oh, be grateful. There's more. This, the discipline of gratitude is the explicit effort 
to acknowledge that all I am and have is given to me as a gift of love. A gift to be celebrated with joy. Gratitude as a discipline involves a conscious choice, not just a reaction. I can choose to be grateful even when my emotions and feelings are still steeped in hurt and resentment. It is amazing how many occasions present themselves in which I can choose gratitude instead of a complaint. Now, I have not perfected this. (sighs) That's hard. The choice for gratitude rarely comes without some real effort. But each time I make it, the next choice is a little easier, a little freer, a little less self-conscious. There is an Estonian proverb that says, who does not thank for little will not thank for much. Acts of gratitude make one grateful because step by step, They reveal that all is grace. I love that. Thank you, Henry, for that. We need something to set our emotions in mind. So let's dig in. I want to begin with a story, Luke 17. I had an aha moment this morning from this story. I was like, what? But it's personal. I'll share it with it in a few minutes. But I, I, I connected something I'd never thought of before. I was beginning to, I'll read the story first. Ten healed of leprosy. As Jesus continued towards Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance. Now keep in mind, you, if you had leprosy, you had to stay away from everybody. It was like the plague. You, you were the most ostracized in, in the whole village. You, couldn't, you were unclean and you had to stay away And if you dared not, they could stone you to death right away because of your disrespect and disobedience. So they stood away at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests because the law requires this. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. By the way, it says, as they went. So as they are going, they are being cleansed. One of them, when they saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. Can you imagine doing the walk and all 10 years and suddenly, hey, your skin's cleaner and up. What? What? So, what? what? You're like, can you just imagine the, the exhilaration of whatever's going on? My nose is back. Like, who knows what was going on? I don't know if they didn't have mirrors, but anyway. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. Keep in mind, the Samaritans were hated by Jews. Jews would go all the way around, like take an extra couple days around the whole region to avoid being in contact with Samaritans. They had a beef, a religious beef. That doesn't happen in our country, does it? That doesn't happen in North America. We fight over our faith, right? No. The Samaritans said, we're supposed to worship on this mountain. And the Jews said, no, we worship in the temple. You're wrong. No, we're wrong. You're wrong. No. And they just, it's like this back and forth. And they just hated each other. And yet, it was the Samaritan that came and said, thank you. Jesus asked, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he's saying this for everyone else. He's not saying it for the Samaritan, making him feel like bad. No, 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 no. And Jesus said to the man, I love this, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Or, your faith has saved you. Does that mean the other nine weren't healed? No. They are fully healed. Here's what hit me. If what Jesus did at the cross affects all humanity, and only one comes back out of all humanity, the few, I would say, maybe those are the ones who come to the awareness, the revelation of the love of Christ and place their faith in Jesus while everyone else still has that healed. But when you're going to hear a response from another translation, you're going to see 
This one recognized the source of the healing. I'm going to share with you a whole bunch of, of translations. I love doing this because one translation cannot share all of it. It just doesn't work. Anybody that studies history and languages knows that. So let's dig into this verse because it's really big. The First Nations translation says, And he said to the man, Stand up, be on your way. Your trust in me has healed you. How is that possible? Well, all ten went. He told them to go, and if they listened, it would have happened, and they all went. So they all had tr some trust, maybe even a sliver of trust, just a sliver. Maybe, maybe it's true. Are you going to try? I'm going to try. I'll try anything right now. Just a sliver of hope that this could be real. And they went. The moment they took the first step, faith became active. And they step by step by step, the trust and hope in the one who declared what can happen. Hmm. Love that. The message translation, which is a very relaxed translation from Eugene Peterson. Then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. And you'll see why in a few minutes why both words are there. Beautiful words. And this is from the mirror translation. I love this because this makes a little more sense. So this is verse 18 now and 19. The nine Jews obviously didn't connect because he's asking, hey, where are the other nine? The nine Jews obviously didn't connect the dots to recognize me as the source of their healing and therefore didn't even bother to turn back and glorify God like this foreigner did. I love how that is said. Again, this adds to the, the artwork that's being set up for us to understand this text. It's not just a flat reading of words. There's a lot going on here. Then he says, he then told the man, you can arise and continue on your life's journey, knowing that it was your faith that rescued you, not something you earned through a religious formula as a reward for obeying some moral Jewish laws and principles. <whistles> Which was the meme I shared at the very beginning. Your faith has rescued you. And then if you have the book, The Incarnate Faith, uh, the book Divine Embrace, uh, I think a couple of you do. But read that chapter on incarnate faith as it describes what is faith. Because this faith, we say your faith healed you. Well, hang on. Whose faith? My faith? Do I have faith on my own? Do I have my own individual, independent, separated from God faith? My own cubby of faith? Do I? No, none of us do. Faith is a gift. Another word for faith is trust. That's why we see the, the word trust in these translations. The faith you have for anything is a gift from Jesus to you. If he gives you a lot, woohoo, celebrate. If he gives you a little, celebrate because that's still a lot. Hmm. This is worth thinking about. Faith. Remember we, um, I forget that verse now, Galatians 2.20. There's no longer I who, um, anyway. I can't, my brain's frozen because I'm on this. But we live by the faith of the Son of God, not faith in the Son of God. That's what that Galatians 2.20 is. Most translations will read it, I live by faith in the Son of God, which is dependent on who? Who's the one that you have to depend on if, it, if you read that verse that way? Yourself. Well, you've never been called to trust in yourself, unlike our society. <laughs> You're called to live by Christ in you. And we live by the faith of the Son of God. The Young's literal translation says, I live by, Son of God, faith. Huh. That's why it's so much easier now to have conversations with people and not try to get them to have faith. Pressure's off. It's not my job to give people faith or help them have faith. My, my job is to reveal the good news that we have been reconciled. And when you believe it, it changes everything. Now, let's get a little deeper, just for fun. 
the uh, Mount's reverse interlinear New Testament. So this is where they take the English and they have the Greek and the numbers and all that weird stuff. And, and they show you what the language is in, from the translation. So it says, your faith has made you well. So the word faith is called pistis. And has made is sozo. Made you well. Sozo. What do those words mean? Glad you asked. All right. Faith. Here's what pistis means. And you're going to be shocked where in Scripture the word pistis is. And it's not always using the same word faith. Believe is sometimes there too in others. So you're, it, it, here's what it means. This is the faith. Your faith has healed you. Faith, belief, firm persuasion, assurance, firm conviction, ground of belief, guarantee, assurance, good faith, honesty, integrity, faithfulness, truthfulness. And the New Testament faith in God and Christ. That's what... That's a very short summary of what faith is. It's not an item to be grasped. I'm going to have some water now. There we go. Now I have water. Oh, now I don't have water anymore. No, I don't have faith. Now I have faith. Now I have water. No, it's not like that. It's internal. And it's a gift. You know Stop telling people to have more faith. I grew up with that. And it's still prominent. I'm finding it more and more in our culture And things are getting worse in our religious world where pressure is being put on for severe performance and control. Listen, Jesus modeled control for us. If he wanted to pull rank, he could have pulled rank. And do you know what he did instead? Submitted. You want to pull rank? You want to control? That's not what Jesus did. Jesus submitted. In fact, the entire Trinity submitted to the cross as humans killed him. In fact, it was the religious system. (laughs) So that's the word faith. What about sozo? This is the one we need to study a whole lot more. I can hardly wait to do a series on what is saved, what does salvation mean. It will surprise many. So sozo. To save, to rescue, to preserve safe and unharmed, to bring safely to, to cure, to heal, to restore to health, to save, to preserve from being lost, to deliver from, set free from, in the New Testament, to rescue, hence the song rescue at the beginning, to rescue from unbelief, convert, to save from final ruin, to be on the way of salvation. Keep in mind, In Scripture, there are three tenses of the word salvation. Will be saved, saved, and has already been saved. All three are fluctuating all the time. So if you're going to fight over it, stop. Because somebody may see it one way, somebody may see it another, some may see all of it, and there's a great mystery in there too. As soon as we get all certain and create fights, we cease to be loving. And we cease to try to understand. But this saved thing is also connected to healing. (laughs) I love it. Acts 16. There's a declaration. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Now, part of this is just a bit of fun because the word Lego is in there. That's all. Just in case, whoever likes Lego, there it is. It's in the Greek. It's a Greek thing. And the word said means Lego. I thought it was pretty funny. Anyway, but believe, pistios, which is a connection to pistis. Believe. Faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus. And you'll be saved, healed. And then you take a look at the word, what saved means. Being drawn in. Saved from, entered into, on the path of salvation. All of it, together. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7 from the NRSVA version, says this. This is beautiful. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives or walk in him, Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. That's a lot there for a moment. As, therefore, you have received Christ. How did we receive Christ? Was it your 
a really special, sincere prayer? Was it the time you were in real trouble and you actually meant it? Or could it be a combination of all the times you half meant it because you were trying to control God because you wanted to get an escape from a problem and then you made a deal and say, hey, if you do this, I'll do this? How many times have we prayed that? I have prayed that over and over in my past. <laughs> yeah, I'll serve you better if you let this save you. <laughs> it's terrible, but that's, 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 that was where I was. I love Jesus dearly. And at no one time have I ever fully understood Jesus. Even today, not a chance. But the revelation is getting bigger and wider and deeper constantly. There is no arrival. That's why we don't compare with someone, someone else. We go, well, they're so spiritual. Oh, it says you. Try asking their spouse. They'll tell you. <laughs> hey, don't elbow him. <laughs> I'm kidding. So joking. <laughs> We don't know what's going on in other people's lives. We don't compare. We, we see other happy people, but we don't know what's going on in their homes. We don't know the crisis they're going through, the stress they're going through. We assume, because we have been trained to judge the exterior. <laughs> That's another sermon. But how have we received Christ? Faith came to you. That's how. Therefore, continue to live your lives or walk in him. By him living in you. Not by trying to get more of him. You can't get more of Jesus. You can't get more of God in you. You are already complete. You lack nothing. Tell me one thing you could possibly lack. And I'll tell you it's your awareness of what you think you're missing. You are fully complete in Christ. Lacking zip. Because what's holding together is the faith of Christ, not your own. My faith would falter and flip flop and be emotionally woohoo because I'm quite emotional sometimes. <clears throat> and then, as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This thanksgiving part is really important. This intentional part. When you meditate and think on, ponder the goodness of God having come to you, like I look back and I. I think, how in the world did I actually come to believe all this? It has to have been Jesus all along. Even in a, in a filtered religious system that I grew up in, that for years I've said, oh, they taught me wrong stuff, and all that. so what? In that wrong stuff, I still learned truth. I just didn't understand all the stuff around it. I had misinterpretations of it. It was, the word is incomplete. Even today, it's all incomplete, and we still grow. I love this unlearning and learning. And I look back and I, I see God is still changing people's lives. And then I bump into people that never came to faith until in their 20s and 30s or 40s. It's like, what? God is still bringing people to faith? Really? No way. Yeah. And then we have the crazy stuff going on in the Middle East where Iranians or Muslims are receiving a direct revelation of Jesus in dreams, visions, and they're believing. Faith came to them, and they believe in Jesus. They, nobody makes this stuff up. And it, these are real stories. It's happening. And nobody went to preach to them. No way. Hmm. Don't tell God how to do his job, and he doesn't need your help. Philippians 4, 12 to 13. I have lived with less than I need. This is Paul writing. And I've lived with more than I need. I've learned the secret of walking the road of life. Whether I am well fed or hungry. Whether I am more than I need or whether I have more than I need or not enough. I can do some things through Christ, the chosen one who gives me strength. No corrections. I can do all things through the chosen one. This is not a Harry Potter wand. I want to warn you. Too many believers, especially on Facebook, throw this verse out there with this flippant, but I can do all things through Christ. It's all good. And they go, plug their ears and go, la, 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 la. And they play the happy card and they sound like cuckoos. It's like, I don't believe you anymore because 
you are not intellectually engaging with this. You're not spiritually engaging and understanding what this is saying. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When God inspires you, when Jesus inspires you, motivates you to do something, the strength will come. The source will come from Jesus. The inspirer will be your strength. And the outcome. Oh my goodness. So who gets the praise? Not you. I'm going to post on Facebook what God did through me this week. <laughs> Seriously, it's a thing. Colossians 1, 9-14. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Something's going on here. Paul's antenna is up. He's praying. Not necessarily on his knees, probably was, but praying constantly. Do we pray for one another like this? Maybe we're unaware. Maybe there's room for some maturity here as you are going, as you're driving, as you're working, praying for people, things. Whatever comes to your mind, praying for leaders, even the ones you can't stand. There's enough of them. <laughs> He's not stopped praying. But praying what? That's <laughs> a hilarious joke. It says, I thought you said you were going to pray for me. And the other side says, yeah, deliver me from evil. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now you get it. <laughs> Bad joke. But anyway, this, the prayer is in all spiritual wisdom and understanding that it will be filled with the knowledge. Pray for the knowledge of God's love in others. You may not even need to pray for people's healing. You can. But when we pray, I pray for peace in people. I was on a Zoom call yesterday with a dying man. They put me on Zoom to, so I can see him and pray for him. My friend Terry, he probably will pass away today. And I, I, I don't know. But I pray for his peace that he'll experience the love of God. Not that he gets healed. Let God take care of that. He can pray that prayer himself. Jesus is praying anyway. So I want to pray for peace. I want him to feel Jesus around him. Well, you should pray for his healing. Well, that was not led to me to do that. Oh, maybe that's a clue. Maybe this is actually about abiding in Christ. Jesus lived by listening to his heavenly father every step of the way. Every step of the way, moment by moment by moment. Even when he turned the water to wine. First miracle in the Bible. Great miracle, by the way. Mama, it takes a mama. Son, we need wine. Now get some. However she did it. But she did the mama thing. And he said, mama, it's not my time. And I have a hunch in those moments, he's talking to his heavenly father. It may not have been the time. And then maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds later, Papa says, now. Now's the time. Just like when he went to Jerusalem. Told the guys, nope, not my time. Well, they're gone for half an hour. Now go. What's with the timing? How come I? <laughs> Jesus never questioned the timing. He listened and trusted his heavenly father to guide him what to say, where to go, moment by moment, instant by instant. On his way to Lazarus' tomb, the only guy I know that shows up four days late for a funeral. Not a good model. But he was listening to his father, working on healing. Even when he arrived, he knew he was going to heal Lazarus and raise him from the dead. But he does something different. Gets to the gravestone. What is it? What happens? He sees the people crying. He doesn't do the religious leader thing. Now I'm here. You can stop your crying. I've got this. Trust me, I got this. Like, hey, you guys, you guys are crying too much. Don't you have any trust in me? Nothing like that. The exact opposite happens. What does he do? He weeps. Why would Jesus weep? 
I'll tell you, it's because he was human. He identified with their pain. He may have known he was going to heal at that moment. He may not have. We don't know. But even if he did, this is about love. This is about gracing those who are there. And he wept. Not just a trickle, but he wept. And that's what we need to learn as believers to be with people. Have ears to hear, emotions to feel what's going on around us. Nobody's going to get it right. But the practice of awareness. Holy Spirit, who do I need to speak to? And you'd be shocked at how many times the Holy Spirit may prod you, nudge you, buy that person coffee, buy this, serve this, clean that yard for that person. Encourage that person. Smile at that person as you walk past them. Now, quick! (laughs) Who who knows? (laughs) And then it continues, verse 10. So that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work. And as you grow in the knowledge of God. Does not say you'll be a fruit. It means you'll bear fruit. Fruit is the Excess, the result of the love of God working its way through our, listen, soul and mind. The love of God. First of all, you got to believe you're loved. If you're not quite there, let God work on that. Be loved. May you be made strong with all the, here it is, strength that comes from his glorious power. That you may be prepared to endure everything, everything, with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Now, happiness and joy are different things. Happiness has to do with happenings. Joy is about the trust of the presence of God. Who has enabled or called you or us to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light? You have an inheritance in Christ. Here it is. He has, past tense, rescued or dragged out of danger to rescue, to save us from the power of darkness and transferred, past tense, us into the kingdom of his beloved son. You're already there. So when we say darkness is strong, The darkness is strong in this one. Well, guess what? The light is bigger. The light is overcome already. And if you believe the darkness has the strength, then it does, according to your belief, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You are already forgiven. Walk in it. When you believe it, you begin to act like it. When you act like it, you actually begin to not only forgive yourself, you begin to forgive others. That's a whole bunch of sermons to go. We've gone through that one, but that's a big one. How do we walk in Thanksgiving? By acknowledging the belief in us. And every one of us has been given a measure of belief. This week, what will it look like to you? I pray that you'll put your antenna up, your faith antenna. That's already there. And maybe Jesus will encourage you. Maybe to walk off for two minutes and pray in a forest or pull over inside of a road and acknowledge a sunrise or sunset. Anything. There are no rules to this. It's not about doing stuff. It's about being the love of God wherever we are. And that's what we need to be in this community or the communities you live in. And you you heard how many places people are watching from. Wherever you are, be the living presence of the love of God. Unfortunately, some of it may take a lot longer because we still are working through believing it for ourselves. When you're frustrated, angry, Take your eyes off the ones you're angry with. It's a misdirection. Put your eyes 
back onto Christ and let that light push out any darkness, that false darkness, and be love. Be loved and be loving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, wake us up to the truth inside of us already. Will you gently help us understand? Will you gently open our minds? I pray today you'll have encouraged everybody who's heard this. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Some reminders for next week. Um, online support, if you are enjoying our connection as a whole fellowship, please do. And oh, by the way, Nancy, uh, i got to go back and read some of this. Nancy Premier from London said hello. Um, Nancy lost her dad this week, so he suddenly died. And there's supposed to be a funeral in Cambridge on Friday, I think. So look up, look up her stuff there. Um, I don't know if I skipped over it accidentally or what, but uh, Nancy, thinking of you, and uh, we care about you. Um, Wednesday morning, Still Growing Grace, an online uh, chat about different topics, uh, especially some of those hot topics that um, we're wondering about. Does the Bible really say this, or how do I understand this? This is always how I've always heard it. Now, is there another more hope-filled perspective? That's what that program is for. If you're not on our email list, send me a message or give me your email address, and we'll put you on. And then next Sunday is the barbecue, so please email me back. Uh, reply to the church email, either from last week or the one coming this week. Tell me you're coming or not, um, and how many. Or just say, hey, you know, Boughton family's bringing three, so, or four, whatever. I saw the th- oh, four now. Okay, I saw th- him put three fingers up. <laughs> So just let me know so that we have a rough idea. And then we'll still have extras, so even if you can't contact me, we still have some. There's no problem. But it's better to be prepared for 50 and uh, only have, you know, 30 show up than have 75 show up and we only have 50. So, all right. And that's it. See you next Sunday.